Hi everyone, this is Russell Foras, your tax and accounting strategist, with this uh, 15 minute live video about the PPP 210 again. So basically, I'm coming today to uh, answer a few questions that I have been receiving since the end of the year about this new hand of PPP. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to go through a couple of those questions. And if I see more questions on the chat or even on the comment, I don't know when you're going to see this video. You still have other questions, just drop the question on the description, I mean, on the comment of this video. Whether it's within the group, the Facebook group that we have created, uh, especially for the PPP and ERGL uh, application. Okay, so at the end, we're going to let you know how to get into that group. Okay, so without further ado, and yeah, the first question that people have been asking is, you know, how long is this is going to last? Okay, how long is the new round of PPP is going to last? The easiest answer or the simple answer is the program is scheduled to go up to uh, January, to March, March 31st. I'm talking about the PPP. It was scheduled to start today. I mean, it's scheduled to the application. The SBA have actually reopened the application uh, today, uh, January 11. Okay, and it's, it's supposed to go all the way to March 31st. But, 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 what's the problem? The problem is that the first round of PPP, if you have, if you can remember, this program actually the first, the initial, the initial, the very first one started back in march okay and the first one actually runs out run out of money only after 14 days i think it's a it says a lot okay just to let you know that normally this program is supposed to go all the way to march 31st the ppp i'm not talking about the erdr or erdr advanced grant or all about this but this PPP is supposed to go all the way to March 31st. But it could actually even stop once the money runs out. It could be after one week, after two weeks, after one month, who knows? Uh, this actually leads me to the next question that people are asking. So what is the chance to get this new round of PPP? This is the big question, right? Okay, people will be like, do I have to invest? Do I have to do this? Do I have to do I have to apply? So what is the chance? First of all, do I have to apply? Yes. Everybody has to apply. Every business owner and self-employer has to apply. You have to apply no matter what. If you, you are found to be ineligible, okay, you're ineligible, right? But if you actually want to apply, so what is your chance to apply on this PPP? Okay, so you have Basically, the simple answer is you have 100% chance, okay? You have 100% chance if you know how to demonstrate the 25% decrease. That's a simple answer. And I've been saying it maybe on the last, on my last two or three or five uh, live or webinar about the PPP and ERDL. So you have 100% chance and you actually even know. So that means whether you apply by yourself or you seek help from a professional you actually know how much you should receive okay not only you have 20 you have 100 percent chance that you will receive it but you also know how much you will receive that is the beauty of the thing that means you know what much i mean whether you are doing by yourself or somebody is helping you the person should actually tell you before you even submit the application the person should tell you how much you will receive uh, simple put how much you are eligible for okay so that's the best thing on it so yes the answer is uh, you have 100 percent chances uh, to uh, get this ppp if you know how to demonstrate the 20 percent decrease and how to demonstrate that it's about your financial statement because you have to con compare your financial statement your data from 2020 with the data from 2021, 2019. As simple as that. And once we do that, we actually, before we submit the application, we know how much you should receive. 
okay so yes that's it. that was the second question that i've been receiving like do you really think i'm gonna receive something what is the chance that i can receive something so i'm addressing it now uh, after this if you still have more questions drop the question below i will be my pleasure to come up and answer for everyone because when you answer the question you're not the only one to have the question many other you know followers or uh, business owner have the same question so the next one is uh, how ready are you to apply so that's my question to you now since i'm telling you you have 100 percent chance to receive the money and you may also you also have you are so confident to know how much you will, you will be eligible for now i'm asking you how ready are you to apply and get those money for you okay you are not ready if you do not what if you don't know what you need to get ready that's the simple answer basically you are not ready if you don't know what you need to get ready and i just said that earlier you need to know how to demonstrate once you know how to demonstrate a 25 percent decrease especially if you are a new applicant i mean if you are repeating that means you receive the money already so yeah you are not ready if you don't know and and you are already late if you are not ready now yes you are already late why because I just I said it at the beginning. It's reopening today, November. I mean January 11. The program, the SBA officially reopened the program today. So the application are supposed to be receiving today. So if you have not done yet, that means if you are not ready, it means you are already late. That's what you need to know. Okay, don't be surprised that at the time I have people who got you know we finished the application the same day, the last day at the end they couldn't process it because it was late okay so if you're not ready you are already late that means you need to know what to do okay the next one is what documentation are you going to use to apply that's the question that people are asking so what do you want me to send you what do you that's what people are saying you have a business what you want to send me if i'm gonna want be the one to do it is to just you know upload your financial statement send them to me just simple just download them send them to me or call your accountant tell them okay can you just print out my financial statement because the person helping me uh, is going to need to, to compare the all the quarters all my you know my financial activity for me to for him to see if i'm available if i'm eligible because if i'm qualified if i can demonstrate the 25 percent decrease the document that you need is your financial statement of course and what the payroll report. I saw people on the first one say, Oh, I mean, I applied, didn't receive nothing. I said, Why? Because now they ask me for to provide W3 and uh, I, I to provide this and provide that. I didn't I say yes, because you didn't even know what you need to provide when you were applying. So when you are applying, don't just put information there if you are doing it by yourself or even somebody is helping you. The person should not be just throwing numbers in there because you need to get the money. You need to think about what will be asked once you throw those information in the system okay so the main important thing that you need is your financial statement the profit and loss statement that's the first thing that is where we can see how much profit how much loss how much income you are making and it's easy to see to compare to see that you have been incurring losses and the loss will be attributed to the COVID-19 now the payroll report will show how much employees because remember i said you last time i said last time that the amount you receive is function of the number of employees you have or another way to put it is based on the average monthly uh, salary okay the average monthly salary that you pay to your employees that means if you do the average of what you pay to your employees you multiply by 12 and then you divide it uh, you add everything you add everything for the whole year and you divide by 12 you will get the monthly average uh, payroll cost that's what you're going to get that means the more employees you have the higher will be your average monthly average payroll cost we explained how to get it on the last video so yes so you're not just not going to say okay i have five employees i have six employees uh, how much do you pay them you just throw number in there because when they ask you for w3 you will not be able to provide it then you will be screwed even though you were supposed to receive something at least for your self-employment activity because you are considered as an employee 
So if you don't do that, then you are school. You won't even get nothing. Okay, that's the reason why you need to know the document you need before you even seek for help on this. Okay, okay. So the next question I'm I'm receiving is what is the PPP a loan or a grant? Okay, that's the question. Even though I've been going on live every day about the PPP, ELDL, ELDL loan, ad advanced grant and stuff, people will be asking, you know, is that the one that is the loan or is this a grant? Even today I received the same question. Yes, it's simple. That is the money that is given to you as a loan. 1% uh, interest for five years. Okay, 60 months. That's basically what they're giving you. They're giving it to you as a loan. But the good part is that it's the only loan that doesn't allow your credit score to be checked. That's the difference between the other loan, which is the EIDL. They will run your credit score, but they will even disqualify you based on your credit score. On this program, you don't have to get your credit score even checked. Okay, but it's a loan. That's the beauty of it. So you have absolutely have nothing to lose. So yes, uh, it's a loan. It's a one percent loan. Even if it was supposed to be a loan forever, I don't know why somebody is going to fund a loan at one percent. Okay, so it's a mm, uh, one percent loan uh, for five years, sixty months, for sixty months. And but the beauty, the beauty of this is that they tell you what you should do to actually make that loan forgivable. That means they tell you what to do to actually transform it into a free money. So to me, I see it as a grant, okay? I see it as a free money basically because if somebody gives me a car and tell me how to drive safely on the road and then the car becomes mine, I don't know why I'm not going to think that it's a gift. To me, it's a gift because it's actually normal to drive safely on the road, right? That's exactly what is happening here. They give you the money. They say use it to pay yourself, to pay your employee, to pay for utility. And they even extended where you can actually use the money. Now you pay for utility, pay for internet. People are actually moving from, from the store to be online. Okay, pay for those, you know, the cost of the new software, cost of internet, cost of new application, cost of this marketing. They are, they are expanding. Basically, you can, use, you can use the money with whatever you want to do. In your business so why should i even what should i even that thinking to us before going for it okay so yes the last question or not the last question one of the questions that is been coming more often is can i apply by myself okay you see that i'm explaining everything to you right now as i'm explaining to you what does that mean <laughs> it means that you can actually do it by yourself but i'm just explaining to you what you need to pay attention on because nobody i mean even though any accounting business wants to help you they will not they, will, they are not going to be uh, able to help everybody that's the reason why even though we are going to be helping people we are not going to be able to help everyone okay especially if you're going to come late or you're not going to be Prompt on sending information or making the payment if you're supposed to make a payment for any service that we provide of course you're gonna find yourself that you're late or maybe that you're not able to help you okay so that's the reason why i say yes you can do it by yourself but it's not advisable i'm gonna be honest with you it's not advisable to do it by yourself why because you will only regret once you have submitted your application and you start talking to an expert, okay? Maybe for follow-up or whatever it is. And then he will tell you, oh, this is what you did. Now you school. Oh, this is what you did. Oh, you know, you sure have not done this, okay? You can do it by yourself. You, you can consult with someone, okay, who will tell you exactly what you are going to do, what you're going to do, what you will provide as information when the request for those information, yes. Then go there and then you will be able to do it by yourself. But if you just look at it, oh, this is the simple thing, I can do it. Of course, I tell you, on the first one, I saw I have somebody who was eligible for one one twenty thousand dollars but he received $14,000. Why? Because his wife didn't know how to do it. I mean, it looks simple. And they put any information, they think it was the right information to put. Now they got school, okay? So, yes, you can do by yourself, but it's advisable to consult with someone 
that will actually guide you just the way we hire people and we guide them to do it for customer yes you can seek for help to do it by yourself but if you just see it it's simple i mean you're gambling right you go and do by yourself it could be good but you could also screw yourself okay so that was a question the answer to that question i'm i'm explaining everything but it will be advisable to you if you want to go through it to call to seek for a new guidance or maybe you are on the seat you whatever you are going through have somebody even an sba agent call them they have you know hotline where can they can help people call them say hey i'm on page two what can i do here they will tell you i'm here what can i do they will tell you yes you can do that okay but don't think that is simple it's just simple because when they start sending you emails to request for documentation that is the time you will be seeking for help that will be late because you have screwed yourself okay so you have to know what you're looking for they are telling you it's a grant okay it doesn't matter whether you received five thousand three thousand or ten thousand what do you have to lose what are you able, able to forgive to receive a five thousand free money okay what are you able to i mean to forgive to receive a five thousand dollar free money so you want to go by yourself and then you school you get school then you start calling or now seeking for help you want you start doing something wrong yes seek for help before to know all the way at that time when you succeed now you can even start helping other people right yes that is that's the answer to that question can i apply by myself because i say like oh it's a simple thing can i apply by myself i think i can do it by myself yes go do it but you need to know what to do okay okay now who can i seek for help that's the question that's uh, derived, derived from the precedent question. Who can I seek for help? Another simple question. Okay? The other simple, question, the other simple answer is that you are initially, you are tax professional or you are accountant if you have a business or you have a relationship with, even your tax professional. I say your tax business, everybody has tax professional. Whether you are a business or a self employer, one employee, no employees, or 10 or 300 employees, you have an accountant your accountant or your tax professional should have been the first person to inform you okay it should have the first first person to inform you and assist you about this program and any other similar financial relief at the federal and state level this is the first answer i have to this question who can i seek who can i seek help for uh, who can i seek for help okay yes your accountant or your tax professional should have been the first person to tell you about this because this is actually how he can help you okay if he's there to you know pay, att pay, pay attention to your numbers and he cannot call you or maybe send you a, any type of communication to let you know that oh there is something available like this there's a question that you have to start asking yourself about that account on that task professional because why because this is the person that can actually be the first one to help you okay now if the that person cannot do it any cpa or task professional that have been closely following the case act and any other federal law related to the ppp or eidl can assist you at okay can assist you you know to get the maximum amount you are eligible for yes any cpa out there any tax professional who is actually following all of this since march and all the change and update and stuff any person any cpa who is following this can help you okay that is what you need to know now i just told the two main category of people who can help you so you know where to find help okay now just in case just in case uh, you are in this group the facebook group that i create to help you guys i didn't create that to actually be the person to assist you but to provide you with information that can help you you have your accountant the information i give you can actually take this information to your accountant or to your tax professional to implement it to help you okay but in case in case you have no one to assist you okay you have no one to assist you in getting your fair share of this ppp program okay you i give you the chance to book an appointment on the link below 
okay, with me or one of the CPA or my team to help you to get the fair share you have, to help you to get the money you deserve. That is basically what, this is the last answer to that question. That was actually the last question that I have uh, to share the answer with you. So basically, if you have no one, yes, it will be my pleasure to assist you. Uh, one of my team members will be uh, more than happy to assist you if you book the appointment. And we will not be working on the work-in basis. It's always by appointment because as we're talking, people book the appointment two, five, three days in advance. So we drop the link here. You book the appointment if you need. If you don't know, if you have the help, go ahead. Go, go use the help you have. And all the information here, use them with the help you're going to receive. And good luck with that, okay? But if you don't have no one to help you, yeah, we'll be more than able to assist you on that. Um, if you think this information are valuable information to you and you also think that you want to help somebody else so please share this piece of communication with anyone any business owner out there any uh, uber driver any contractor out there to help him receive this money because uh, we're not sure how long this money is going to last before they tell you oh it's over you know it's over so yes and the last thing i'm going to do is that we i'm doing this normally for my group because we have the facebook group specifically to help um, business owner and self-employed people achieving this federal grant and loan okay if you are interested and you need more and uh, even further help on all of this federal program um, and any other type of loan out there because you are actually implementing any type of loan that you want to a business uh, we will drop a link there for you to, you know, click and try to submit your application, send your request according for, to your request and the answer, the type, the type of your business, we will decide whether we should accept you in the group or no, okay, in the Facebook group or no. It's a private group where we actually share those communication. Okay, until then, um, this was Russell Follas and I will always be here for you guys. Thank you. Ok, maintenant je vais aller en français. Ok, so, uh, je suis, mon nom c'est Roussel Follas. Je reviens ici en live tout simplement pour rappeler, 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 rappeler à mes frères que voici une autre opportunité que beaucoup encore vont rater. Les gens ont raté la première opportunité, n'est-ce pas? Euh, après, en fait, beaucoup de personnes se sont rendues compte qu'elles se faisaient plus ou moins tard. Et je ne sais pas ce quoi on se base, le gouvernement se base, peut-être parce qu'ils estimaient que le COVID-19 va finir après deux mois, après cinq mois, après six mois, après huit mois. Finalement, on y est toujours. Peut-être c'est la raison pour laquelle on estimait qu'il fallait encore une mesure euh, de secours pour aider les business owners. Non, ce n'est pas seulement les business owners, puisque la loi euh, s'étend sur plusieurs niveaux, mais je me limite spécifiquement sur les business owners. Donc, au niveau des business, il y a dans cette nouvelle loi qu'on a créée. Je parle en français parce que je vais maintenant expliquer beaucoup d'autres choses que je n'aurais pas pu dire en anglais ok donc euh, pour vous dire mes frères que beaucoup d'autres communautés également comme la première vague sont déjà en train de jump on it ils sont déjà en train de s'emparer de ce gâteau encore souvenez vous la première vague à un moment on a même pointé certaines entreprises en leur disant oh vous savez quoi vous ce que vous avez pris pourquoi parce que elles se sont préparées je parle maintenant parce que je voudrais que vous mes frères si tu as une activité que l'activité soit enregistré dans le state où tu vis ou ce ne soit même jamais enregistré ok que ce soit enregistré ou pas et par chance on n'a pas encore filé les taxes ça veut dire que une activité même en 2012 qui n'était pas encore enregistrée tu peux n'est-ce pas déclarer cela ça c'est ce que je n'ai pas dit en anglais tu peux la déclarer maintenant comme étant une activité que tu as fait en 2012 et démontrer la perte que tu as eu et maintenant, pendant que tu fais les taxes, tu vas intégrer cela dans tes taxes. Même si c'est un, un business, une activité que tu faisais qui n'est pas incorporée du tout, ce n'est pas enregistré. Ça, c'est ce que je ne peux pas dire en anglais. Ok? Donc, pour moi, c'est que toute la communauté francophone vivant aux États-Unis, vous avez besoin de saisir cette opportunité. Beaucoup de personnes ont, ont loupé l'opportunité la première fois. Ce ne sera pas, en fait, ne sais pas ce que je gagne quand des personnes loupent l'opportunité. Ça me gêne plutôt parce que... Sur le plan financier, c'est un bonus pour moi parce que 
beaucoup de beaucoup d'étrangers viennent solliciter nos services euh, et nous les aidons quand nous les aidons <rire> ils payent ok maintenant et ça me gêne tout simplement en tant que francophone je veux pas dire ivoirien ou sénégalais Burkinabé ou Camerounais, en tant que francophone, nous devons être créé un bloc de francophones et pouvoir faire des choses ensemble. Donc pour moi, c'est partager ici avec tous mes frères francophones. C'est une opportunité. J'ai expliqué en anglais comment ça se passe. Si vous vivez aux États-Unis, sûrement, forcément, vous comprenez l'anglais. Donc je ne sais pas si j'aime de rentrer en détail pour, pour poser les questions et répondre à ces mêmes questions. J'ai expliqué en détail ce qu'il faut faire. Mais la chose la plus importante, c'est que vous devez savoir que si vous avez un business, vous avez une activité génératrice de revenus, même si c'est un décaire, n'importe quoi, même si c'est un truc que vous vendez sur Amazon, c'est un business. N'importe quoi que vous avez, c'est un business. Juste, vous savez, juste pas, parfois poser des questions aux professionnels. Dites, ok, est-ce que ça a plein? Moi, je vends seulement sur Amazon, je ne suis pas enregistré. -ce que... Oui, c'est oui, un business. À condition, n'est-ce pas, que pendant que vous faites les taxes, vous les déclarez dans vos taxes. Et déclarer dans les taxes, n'est-ce pas, que vous payez beaucoup d'impôts. L'impôt ne se paye pas sur le chiffre d'affaires que vous avez fait. Tu peux faire un chiffre d'affaires de 50 000 ou alors déclarer un chiffre d'affaires de 50 000. Mais avoir un, une base taxable ou alors net income, comme on dit souvent, de 500 dollars, 50 000 et 500 dollars, regarde le cas. Ok? Ou bien 50 000 et 5 000 dollars, 50 000 et 1 000 dollars. Donc, c'est surtout, ce n'est pas le montant que vous déclarez, que le montant que vous payez. Donc, le plus important, c'est que vous puissiez déclarer l'activité dans vos taxes. Ok, vous utilisez l'activité maintenant pour appliquer pour ces programmes. Et n'est-ce pas, en même temps, vous filez vos taxes en, en déclarant à l'intérieur. Si vous avez déjà fait vos taxes, alors ça va être difficile. À moins que l'activité soit une activité qui est, euh, qui est euh, enregistrée et que l'activité euh, soit faite séparément. Donc, parce que vous ne pouvez pas prouver l'existence du business. L'existence du business si, se, se prouve tout simplement par l'existence de cette activité-là dans votre tax return. C'est ce que je veux dire. C'est une chance pour vous parce que la première fois, c'est survenu au milieu des taxes. Beaucoup de personnes avaient déjà fait leurs taxes. Donc, il y avait plus ou moins beaucoup moins de choses à faire. Mais là, c'est au début. Donc, vous avez des possibilités ici de pouvoir déclarer. Ou alors vous avez fait des choses parce que beaucoup de personnes ont trouvé ça comme une opportunité à faire des choses. Vous avez fait des choses en 2020, puisqu'il s'agit de taxe 2020. By the way, ils vont, on, va, on va comparer entre 2020 et 2021 l'année taxable qui est avantageuse pour vous pour obtenir ce programme-là. Ok? Donc, ce que vous avez besoin de faire, c'est quoi? Si vous avez eu à faire des articles, beaucoup de personnes, euh, pendant qu'on fait Oh non, j'ai fait ce business, j'ai seulement fait ceci, j'ai seulement fait cela. Mais le qu'est-ce que le IRD a dit? Le IRD a dit. Quand vous appliquez, le fait seulement d'appliquer, même si vous êtes éligible pour 0 dollar, le fait seulement d'appliquer, vous êtes éligible pour 0 dollar, mais vous êtes quand même éligible pour 10 000 dollars, qui est ce qu'on appelle Advanced Grant. Donc, mais lorsque vous appliquez, même si vous avez un chiffre d'affaires de 500 dollars seulement, ok? Of course, le montant de IRDL dépend du chiffre d'affaires. Si vous n'avez fait presque pas de chiffre d'affaires, ok? Vous ne voulez pas déclarer un chiffre d'affaires que vous n'avez pas fait. Vous avez seulement vendu Amazon pour 2000 dollars. 2000 dollars va vous permettre d'être légitime, peut-être, c'est pas trop quoi, 1000 dollars ou 800 dollars. Mais à côté de ça, ça peut même vous faire être, en fait, être légitime de zéro. Ou même on peut même vous dire que votre crédit n'est pas bon. Donc vous n'avez rien. Ça ne vous disqualifie pas d'être éligible pour 1000 dollars. Ce que j'ai appelé ici, là, la, 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 les 10 000 dollars les plus faciles à avoir aux États-Unis. Donc dès que vous le faites, vous avez 10 000 dollars que vous devez avoir. Je ne sais pas pourquoi on devrait réfléchir. Ou encore, pourquoi on ne devrait pas partager l'information. C'est en fait ça. Je la partage. Pourquoi? Pas parce que je vais avoir un profit dessus. C'est parce que pour moi, c'est que c'est euh, des revenus, c'est des, 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 des moyens qui sont à la disposition de tout le monde. Et que beaucoup de communautés, beaucoup de les anglophones, les, les juifs, toutes les autres communautés, les blancs, chacun va faire tout pour pouvoir récolter cet argent. Alors, mon but ici, c'est pour que chaque, ma communauté puisse en bénéficier également. Ok? Et c'est une chance que les taxes ne soient pas là. Vous avez besoin de faire quoi? Puisqu'on n'a pas fait les taxes, vous devez simplement préparer des financial statements. Le financial statement, c'est un document financier qui montre en fait combien est-ce que vous avez fait pendant l'année et combien vous avez fait pendant le mois et combien de dépenses vous avez fait. On peut dégager des, des profits euh, mois après mois. Et ça se fait par, tant que c'est fait par une compagnie, une entreprise qui est reconnue, ça a foi, ça a fait une preuve. Ok? C'est lorsqu'il y a audit. 
qu'on peut dire, ok, ok, tu déclares avoir euh, fait des dépenses de 10 000 dollars. Montre-moi le reçu de la dépense, que ça c'est au cas d'où il y a un audit. Mais en principe, un document acceptable, c'est un document financier, financial statement, income statement, comme on l'appelle souvent, ou encore on l'appelle profit or loss statement. Donc lorsque vous avez ça, c'est l'un des documents qui peut être utilisé pour démontrer que votre activité en principe a suivi un coût. Lorsque vous démontrez cela, vous devenez éligible à presque tout cet argent qui est là. Maintenant, le montant de l'éligibilité pour le PPP, ce sera le bénéfice que vous déclarez dans l'activité. C'est en fonction du bénéfice que vous déclarez dans l'activité. Si vous êtes self employé ou si vous n'êtes pas employé, seul employé, ça dépend du nombre d'employés que vous avez, que vous déclarez dans votre business. Mais pas, 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 pas que vous déclarez, que vous avez effectivement, parce qu'en termes de, de payroll, vous devez soumettre produire un document qui provient du AOS, du gouvernement, qui montre combien vous avez payé en termes de salaire aux gens. Mais si vous n'avez pas de salaire, votre net income, c'est-à-dire le bénéfice de l'activité, constitue une base pour savoir combien vous payez. Maintenant, sur le, au niveau du EIDL, on se base sur le, le chiffre d'affaires déclaré. Okay? Le chiffre d'affaires déclaré, c'est la base taxable. N'est-ce pas? C'est la base taxable. C'est pas la base taxable, c'est la base des calculs. Plus c'est élevé, plus vous avez beaucoup, quoi. Disons ça comme ça. Donc, euh, je vais l'arrêter ici. Si vous avez autre question, n'est-ce pas? Continuez à la poser. Donc, je dis encore, ça, c'est une opportunité encore plus grande que la première. Parce que vous avez beaucoup plus de marge de manœuvre pour pouvoir faire beaucoup de choses euh, que vous n'aurez jamais pu faire. Déjà, des gens ont commencé à faire des choses qu'ils n'auraient jamais pu faire. Maintenant, c'est une possibilité de faire encore plus. Vous pouvez doubler parce que des personnes qui ont saisi l'opportunité avant, ces personnes sont toujours éligibles d'avoir encore de l'argent maintenant. Mais toi qui as raté la dernière opportunité, tu as la chance de te rattraper maintenant. Ok? Donc, euh, comme je dit tantôt, nous avons un Facebook groupe euh, où nous disons ces gens qui ont des difficultés vont poser des questions. On peut les aider pour ces différents types de financement du, du gouvernement fédéral à la, à, en direction des entreprises. Donc, euh, je vais, je vais déposer un groupe, un lien dans ce, à, la, à la fin de cette vidéo euh, qui va vous permettre, n'est-ce pas, de, de cliquer pour soumettre euh, votre demande pour accéder dans le groupe. Euh, mon équipe va étudier et si possible, vous pourrez accéder dans le groupe et bénéficier de tous les avantages, de toutes les questions que vous pouvez poser. Certaines choses que nous ne pouvons partager que là-bas, vous aurez accès à ça également. Et une dernière fois, partagez si vous pensez qu'il y a un frère, un ami, même un ennemi. Parce que si l'ennemi ne prend pas 10 000 dollars, 20 000 dollars, ce n'est pas à vous qu'on donnera cela. Ok? Donc, euh, until then, ciao. C'était Roussel Follas, votre euh, tax and accounting strategist. Ciao.